All right. You want to do it? Sure. I'll do it. What are we talking about? All right. We're back. My name's Riley. Why do you always do that? <laughs> I just want to see what you're reacting to. God. Riley and I, believe it or not, we played indoor volleyball. USC, we played in Greece together. That only lasts a few months. Riley's played a lot more professionally indoor than me, but what we're going to teach you today is the five things we wish we knew about beach volleyball before we stepped out on the sand. Before we stepped out on the sand. You're going to want to know these things if you want to become a pro beach volleyball player. Yes. So five things you need to know to play beach volleyball if you're an indoor player. The first one is hitting. The biggest mistake we see indoor players making when they transfer to the beach is they always broad jump and they never get their feet to the ball and jump straight up. If you do find yourself broad jumping on the beach, one thing that you can do is to shorten your approach. Indoor, we have these long approaches. You can broad jump to the ball. It doesn't really matter where you take off from, but for beach, shorten your approach. You can get your feet to the ball. It'll help you solve that issue. So you don't broad jump and you don't end up hitting into the tape or probably into the net. Net and tape, same thing but tape dribbling over and then net <laughs> is there or underneath the net. Yeah, the biggest difference obviously in beach and indoor is on the beach, you're playing on the beach. The ground is shifty, it's hard to move. You shorten up your approach, you're better able to get your feet to the ball and jump straight up. When you jump straight up, you wanna dig your feet into the sand and gather, whereas indoor, you're kinda just twinkle toeing and you can explode off the ground because you're jumping off hard ground. Beach, you can't really do that. So it's sand versus wood. Good point. Yep. Indoor, broad jumping, beach, jump straight up. Get your feet there. Biggest difference, number two, is setting. All right, I used to be an indoor setter. I've quickly found out that the setting skill from indoor does not transfer to the beach. They are com two completely different skills. I would say that it's comparable to playing defense and passing. They look the same, but they're completely different. Setting indoor, setting indoor is all about having fast hands, looking the same. You're not really using your legs once you get to a certain level. It's all about quick release, using your wrists, and firing that ball to the pin. Beach is not like that. Now, if you were to rate yourself as an indoor setter compared to a beach setter, how small or big is that margin? In terms of how good you are at it. No comment? So, when these indoor players come to the beach, we see them flicking the ball, and what they don't do is they don't use their entire body. All right, so starting with your feet, knees, abs, chest, shoulders, elbows, not really, and your hands, and using that all in a kinetic motion. That's a good word, I just learned that word. All right, to put up a good ball. So you're not flicking it, you're using everything. It's like a wave of energy, and you're just putting up that perfect set, not this. <laughs> Biggest difference, number three, is passing. Now, Riley was a setter in indoor. I was a utility player. I played libero, played outside hitter, basically did everything. So the difference with indoor passing is obviously you have three people passing, sometimes four, but it's you don't move, you have to move your feet that much. It's just a step here with the seam, a step here with the seam. So your feet aren't as important as getting your finished platform there. So balls are coming fast, it's just getting your platform there, here, wherever it needs to be, and you're good. Beach, it's a little bit more complicated. You gotta move your feet. You got way more court to cover, the seams are a lot bigger, so you can't just rely on angling your platform and taking up this small little seam. There's only two people on the court, you gotta move your feet. Yeah. And one of the biggest things that helps me Move my feet is I'm just thinking like twinkle toes. Be light on my feet, be on the top of the sand, and be ready to move. Yeah, he's right. I do the same thing, twinkle toes. Biggest difference number four is blocking. I'm gonna explain to you the difference because Riley doesn't know anything about indoor blocking or beach blocking. I think I literally have two blocks in the past five years on the AVP. Are, one was on Taylor. Yeah. We do have that. <laughs> oh, take, take, take. Oh. Simply put, indoor blocking is more reactionary, 
where beach blocking is more reading. You have more time to take in information of what the hitter is doing from the speed of their approach to the angle of their approach. You're able to set up and take in so much more information, whereas in indoor, you're there reading the setter, you're going and you're just kind of reacting. You could be taking line or angle, but it's really just reacting. Blocking on the beach is a little bit more complicated. If you watch someone like Jake Gibb, he's not always just going up and pressing over at the same time, exact same way. He's reading the hitter. Sometimes he goes straight over it. Sometimes he delays and waits and tries to swat that high line. Indoor volleyball, that stuff never happens. You're blitzing to the outside, pressing over, trying to just stay disciplined. Beach, it's more of a chess match. You are trying to bait the hitter into what you want him to hit. To sum it up, what I would recommend is being, obviously trying to take in as much information as you can, but being more aggressive as a blocker. Not just taking up space, but to do different things, try and delay for that high line shot or drop into the angle and get your arms outside of your body. So being more aggressive with your hands and more deliberate rather than just taking up space because you're reacting when it comes to indoor volleyball. Biggest difference number five is defense. Now, in indoor volleyball, generally speaking, you're playing zone defense. The ball gets set outside, the defense shifts into basically the same spot every time. You have your assigned spot, you're supposed to take care of your spot, your coach tells you to do this, there's no thinking what's involved. Ball comes at you, you dig it. That's it. Beach is more of a cat and mouse game. It's a chess match. You're not always doing the same thing. In fact, most of the times, you're doing something different than the time you did previously. So you wanna stand in one position, use fakes, use jukes, to try and bait the hitter into shooting something that you're already gonna play for. So you gotta be smarter. <laughs> not this mindless indoor defense. So we only thought it was five, but we actually have six, so this is our <laughs> bonus one. Riley wrote up the script, and I thought it was only five. So for the fifth and final one for oh, the people. The sixth. Oh, sixth and final one. <laughs> the biggest difference, no. <laughs> but the bonus biggest difference between indoor and beach is serving. <laughs> Alright, biggest... oh, can I just say one thing? Yeah, go on. See, the biggest difference is that with indoor serving, you can foot fault by stepping over the line. <laughs> but with beach, you can foot fault by not only stepping over the line, but also under the line. <laughs> I did not I'm gonna, know where you're going with that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, show you what I mean. Uh, compliments of our friend Brian Cook. <laughs> oh, Don't stand oh. under the line. Did you get that on film? Oh, that was the dumbest oh. thing I've ever done. Yeah! Oh. I don't need. Like, like, what? I'm like, bro. There's a huge divot <laughs> under the line. People are like standing line. under it. Oh. Yeah. I'll step back. You can't argue that. <laughs> you can't argue it. All right. <laughs> Let's get serious. Okay. Biggest difference between indoor and beach volleyball serving is when you're on the beach, you got to deal with the elements. There's wind direction. There's the sun. There's what else? The wind. The wind. Did you say that? Yeah. <laughs> the rain. Bottom line is your toss, your approach, everything can change depending on how severe the elements are, particularly the wind. The direction of the wind can greatly impact your serve. If it's blowing cross court, then maybe you have to go to a different corner to serve from. If it's blowing straight at you, that's the good side and you can rip your jump serve. If it's blowing at your back, then jump serving is probably out the window. Wait, let's do this. You're the server. Okay. Here's the net. Okay, here's my court. You're the server. Yeah. I know, We're, my court's here? Yeah. Okay. And the wind's blowing this way. Where are you serving from? Sir, I'm serving from here. Okay, now, wind's blowing this way. At me? Yeah, what do you do? Ripping jump serves. Yeah. Wind's blowing this way. Try not to serve out. And wind's blowing this way. I'm gonna move over here. Serve that guy. So you wanna serve into the wind. Was that a good way to show that or not? I think, I it, I I think, it, I think it works. Right, ooh, cool. ooh, bonus tip number seven, eight, nine, whatever it is, the sun, which is another element. One thing that's good to know is if the sun is on either of the back lines. So what I like to do, let's say the sun's at my back, <laughs> and I can see a shadow, or I see my shadow, 
I line my shadow up straight at the person I want to serve because I know the sun is in their eyes and just like a high, deep float so they have to look into the sun. It's brutal. I've gotten aces like that. So that's another tip for all you indoor players coming to the beach. That's like tip 6B. Yeah, you guys got your money's worth with this video. Yeah. Yeah, we get it. That was brief. It was the abbreviated spark notes, just skim the surface version. Exactly. So what our plan is, is to go into depth on all the skills that we talked about. I don't know if there was five or eight skills, but go into depth, make individual videos on every single one. Cause there's a lot to know if you're an indoor player wanting to play beach. And so if you have any recommendations of what skills you'd want to learn or something that you're having a hard time with, please put those in the comments below as well. If you want a certain volleyball player to uh, help us out to teach it. Right? Sure. I'm down. Oh yeah. And subscribe. That'd be great. What's that? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and smash that like button. <laughs> great. Done.